In the headlines, Liat says cutting unprofitable routes not likely to have any major impact on shareholder countries. A Calypso Association executive wants results of this year's Calypso finals investigated and Dominica looking to increase regional appeal of its jazz and creole festival. I am Andrea V with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Thank you for staying with us. First up, Liat's management has agreed that destinations of its shareholder governments will suffer little or no impact as the airline cuts unprofitable routes. As of the 1st of March, Liat has struck off flights to St. Croix on its schedule. And as of the 2nd of March, the airline has suspended a Guadeloupe to Dominica flight. Instead, that flight will be direct from Antigua to Dominica. However, managing consultant for Liat Dominica, Gerard Kulzatig, explained to Channel 5 News that there's not been any dramatic change in Liat's Dominica route schedule. I know a decision was taken a few months ago by the shareholders, that the shareholder governments, namely St. Vincent, Barbados, Dominica and Antigua, will not be affected. They will serve those countries because of the fact that they have put money into Liat. So I think that's one of the good things that some of the other islands should do, is to put, is to put money into Liat. I've seen the schedule for June and we have maintaining the flights that we have now. Guadeloupe well, no, Guadeloupe, we have had issues with, with Guadeloupe. In, in particular, when we, like for instance, in the afternoon, it flies from Antigua to Guadeloupe, Dominica, it stays so long in Guadeloupe, so sometimes the flights are affected. So what they have done is to put a direct flight from Antigua to Guadeloupe and back, which in fact makes connections from people here to Antigua and to Guadeloupe and Guadeloupe, Antigua and back here on the last flight. So people going to and from Guadeloupe will just have to go via Antigua. But, you know, that's it. Cools Latig supports the idea that Liat should restructure operations to run as a business. If you're, if you're a business person and they say something is not making money, you will obviously want to, want to cut it off. It's just like, for instance, if, 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 you, if you run a number of taxis and you're making a, a routes every, every hour and it's not making sense, then you'd obviously do it every two hours. So that is, that is what, what it is, really. It's just not, you know, we've too, too long we've been doing things just to please people and so on. So we have to try and make things work now. Last year, Liat lost some $14 million and shareholder governments have been asking the governments of St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis and Grenada to invest in the cash-strapped airline. Kuzlatik says the payment of customs over time locally on Liat's bill is very high. The expenses are very high. First of all, you have to, to pay landing fees, communications and, and the navigation fees. For instance, in, in Dominica, we have, to, we have to pay customs over time. Anytime an aircraft lands before, before 8 and after 4, Saturdays and, and holidays. And these things run into hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you look at, the, at your fares, you'll see a lot of it is taxes, 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 which the authorities and, and the government get. So actually what is going into Liat's pocket is not what the um, fears show, you know. Mm -hmm. In other lead stories, an executive member of the Dominica Calypso Association believes an investigation should be launched into the results of this year's Calypso finals. Dice and Daddy Chess had tied for second place, which raised eyebrows and questions in the public. When Channel 5 News spoke to President of the Dominica Calypso Association, Derek De Hunter St. Rose, he explained that if the judges had informed the association's executive at the time, then they could have assisted in breaking the tie. However, he maintains that the judge's decision is final and the results will have to be accepted. Nevertheless, PRO of the Calypso Association explained to Channel 5 News that there is a tie-breaking method in place which some judges are well aware of. If there is a tie between two Calypsonians, the judging criteria have four sections. It has the lyrics, the melody, the rendition and the presentation. You first go to the lyrics. You watch the lyrics, you go to the raw scores and if, a, if any Calypsonian end up beating someone, beating each other, a Calypsonian end up beating one in the lyrics, then you use the lyrics and you break the tie. Mm -hmm. If they still tie at the lyrical aspect, you go to the melody. 
and if they still tell you go down to the to the um, rendition if they still tie you go to the presentation and if at the end of the day they still tie then you have a, a way that you could put a, a vote you have nine judges you put the vote if you end up with four and four then the chief judge have the deciding vote to break that tie so all along and all of you look at it there is a formula that is established to break the tie and i really don't understand how and why we end up with a tie. The PRO believes an investigation into the matter should be launched, particularly for the record-keeping purposes of the Calypso Association. Personally, if I had my way on the Calypso Association, and I told that to the rest of the executive, if I had my way, I would have launched an investigation into that matter. Because for, for, the, for the records of the Calypso Association, I think we need to know what really went on on that night, as to why among the judges, as to why the judges find it to give us, to, to basically, as far as I'm looking at it, they broke the rules of the Calypso Association with impunity because they knew all along that Calypso Association has a formula in place to break ties. Victor pointed out that since this method has been used countless times in the past to break ties, there is absolutely no reason why a tie should exist in a Calypso competition, especially at the finals. As recent as last year, um, two years ago, when Professor and Bute Jamabinow tied in the Calypso finals, they used the formula and they broke the tie. This year at the eliminations, they used the same formula to break between BO and Hexi tied, right in the reserves. So I am really, 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 really baffled as to why we end up getting from the judges in the Calypso finals a tie between Daddy Chess and Dice. On to health now. Work on the country's new national hospital is set to be progressing smoothly and according to plan. Hospital Services Coordinator at the Princess Margaret Hospital made the announcement during a function at the hospital earlier this week. By August 2017, we have two of the buildings which will be ready and functional. The first building is, uh, is the emergency building, which will, have, which will accommodate the accident and emergency department on the ground floor, administration on the top floor. And the other building on the east will be a three-story building, will, and will, it will accommodate the radiology department on the ground floor, the medical lab in the center, and all patient department, which will, have, which will accommodate um, dialysis, ambulatory care unit, um, ECG, Doppler machines, etc for our outpatient services. So these two buildings will be, will be completed and functional by August 2017. Brian says the project is expected to meet its deadline date of 2019. Most of the buildings here will be demolished over three years. And at the end of three years, that's in 2019, April 2019, we will have a brand new state-of-the-art modern national hospital. Yunnan Construction Engineering Group Corporation of the People's Republic of China is the main contractor for this 40 million US dollar project. In tourism, a vision for the island's growing jazz and creole festival to have more regional appeal, particularly in the face of St. Lucia's cancellation of its jazz and arts festival. The Discover Dominica Authority will host the main stage jazz and creole event at Fort Shirley Cabritz on Sunday, 4th June. The expectation is that this year's activity will top last year's attendance of over 2,000 people. This year the festival will be promoted regionally um, in our main markets where we did for as we did for Carnival and the World Creole Music Festival because the interest in what Dominica has to offer is there. And Jazz and Creole from year one with just about 600 patrons has 
exploded over the eight years and last year we had over 2600 patrons at the Cabrits National Park. We look forward to having local and regional patrons attend. The organizers have taken into consideration that St. Lucia will not be staging its April 30th to May 10th Jazz and Arts Festival due to high costs and low returns. The OECS sister island, however, will still host a Jazz Week in May. Yes, we have realized that St. Lucia will not be hosting their Jazz and Creole in the traditional sense, their Jazz Festival, sorry. We will be using the opportunity to encourage persons to come over to Dominica for a jazz event in a national park similar to what St. Lucia has, but we, are not, we still will not be able to hit the type of event that St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival is, but we'll encourage persons from St. Lucia and the region as a whole to come over to Dominica for a jazz and creole festival. The issue of space to accommodate a larger crowd at the Cabrits Park is also being looked at. Fringe events for Jazz and Creole will run from 28th May to 3rd June. The International Headline Act and other performers will be announced when the event is officially launched later this month. A tourism consultant says the cruise industry is rapidly expanding and Dominica can position itself to get a slice of that pie. Darley of Cruise Consultants Consortium is part of a team working to develop Dominica's cruise tourism policy, strategy and action plan. Latest statistics show cruise visitors to Dominica spend over $500 a day. The asset is here is the, is the environment. We have to make sure that guests that come here, what do we want to make sure that they, they see? They got to see the ecotourism and the environmental value that Dominica, because you're in a unique position. You are underdeveloped compared to some destinations which have this beautiful greenery and landscape. We got to get them out as soon as possible. So the idea is don't underperform, make sure we meet the expectations of the guests who pick Dominica on their itinerary. He says Dominica needs to pursue a sustainable tourism product that enriches the lives of everyone. It's very important every, media, every minute that a guest is here in Dominica. We impress them with the assets that we have and make sure they have a great experience. Why? The intent to return. And we are looking for opportunities to build business sectors around the cruise industry that will support not only an infrastructure, but also build destinations in the minds of the consumer that they'll want to return to the island, possibly not as a cruise tourist, but as a land-based tourist and spend a longer period of time. Coming up, progress on teaching French in schools here, and a local beach gets good international press. Welcome back. A major announcement by Prime Minister Skerritt about plans for an international airport in the Northeast. Here is the Prime Minister addressing students at Northeast Comprehensive on Thursday. I give you the assurances that this government is doing everything possible to build an international airport here in the Northeast. You understand? And I will, I will, I will, I will be the first, you will be the first that I'm saying so, because I've not said so to the country before that we have in fact engaged an international firm, an American firm, to do all of the studies in relation to the international airport. And they are coming down to do a presentation to the cabinet on the 21st of April 2017 on their findings. Northeast Comprehensive is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. A carnival planner believes there are too many carnivals on island trying to compete with Roseau. Val Coffey, a former events director of the Dominica Festivals Committee, was brought in as a consultant to assist with planning carnival. He says he does not want to have to deal with carnivals in all other communities. There's a lot of carnivals in Dominica. There are too many carnivals. Um, we need to focus that Dominica has one main carnival attraction, which is the main carnival in the city of Roseau, like there's Northern Hill Carnival, like there's Labor Day. The, the others are operating almost like as if well, we are competing in them. There's no competition. Coffee was quick to add that communities should work with the festival's committee to bolster the city's carnival product. Once Roseau has launched, once, once the main carnival has happened, there should be no other discussion as to um, there's another launch happening right after the launch of, the, of, of, of Dominica's carnival in Roseau. Because there's some main carnivals that are strong, um, Portsmouth, um, St. Joseph, Granby, we understand that. Um, 
<laughs> we, we have a challenge when there's a carnival in Maho, the entire road is blocked off. If there's an emergency, how do we get people in and out? You know, ambulance may have to pass. So there are a lot of, lot of, of, of technical things, the roads in St. Joseph, how do we, how do we accommodate that? Um, coming from the south. So there are a lot of things, a lot of discussions that we have to have, which are genuine concerns, but doesn't mean that we're going to just suddenly um, create a state of this, of, 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 of this unity and there won't be the carnivals. No, we're not saying that. We're just saying that we have to sit across the table like we offered you an olive branch and you did not show up. It's time that we come and all speak the same language for carnival in Dominica. Meantime, Coffee has called on organizers and participants of carnival groups to start planning for a grand staging of next year's reunion carnival. Dominica will observe a reunion year come 2018. The last reunion celebration was held in 2008. Uh, we're hoping that these bands and, and organizations will get ready as early as possible for 2018. Start thinking at, at this point how best you can make um, the carnival bigger and better your bands and, uh, and be more organized and to get ready to, to provide uh, Dominica with a, with a wonderful spectacle for 2018. We are also hoping that um, all retired um, bands will come out of retirement and will make themselves readily available. Uh, for Dominica's Carnival 2018 as we come down to big and better things. On to educational developments, the Ministry of Education has achieved one of its major goals for schools on island. This as there is now 100% teaching of French in schools as opposed to 85% reported last year. Senior Education Officer in the Curriculum Measurement and Evaluation Unit, Robert Geist, says this is in keeping with the Ministry's National Curriculum Framework. French, because of our hard-working teachers, because of our hard-working French coordinator, because of the support from the Ministry of Education, because of the support from the Alliance Forces, and because of the support from the French government, French is now being taught, I've been advised by our French coordinator, in 100% of our schools. Uh, up to last year's festival, we had about five schools not teaching French, but this year we have all of our schools doing French. And this is a good sign because it, is, it forms French and modern languages forms part of our national curriculum framework. Additionally, over 100 Dominican teachers have been trained in Martinique as part of an agreement to ensure an improved quality of French teaching in Dominica. Gist was speaking at a ceremony to launch activities for Francophone Month, which runs from 13th to 31st March. The activities include a cooking competition, poetry evening, and a secondary school's French day. One of the highlights of the month is the Mademoiselle Francophony pageant on 25th March. The six participants were sashed by Mademoiselle Francophony 2016, Janelle Philip of the Grand Four Primary School. And we know that traditionally, islands offering white sand beaches have had an advantage over Dominica in terms of attracting visitors to the island. But that could be changing as previous efforts to promote Dominica's unique nature tourism may be paying off. A recent article in the Huffington Post has highlighted one of Dominica's beaches as one of a list of seven stunning beaches that will make you want to travel to the Caribbean. The article describes the Caribbean as home to some of the world's most beautiful and diverse beaches. The writer makes a good case for potential visitors looking to explore these one-of-a-kind beaches in the Caribbean. The article states, nestled along the coastline in Roseau, Dominica, Champagne Beach has much more to offer than the pristine white sand beach that first meets the eye. Beach dwellers will be spellbound as soon as they dip their toes into the warm turquoise waters. The seafloor covers a series of volcanic vents which release drops of liquid crystal into the water. The effect for swimmers, like floating in a giant flute glass of champagne. It goes on to say that this is great for snorkeling right off the shoreline. Champagne Reef will also wow visitors with its vibrant coral and plentiful sea life. Less crowded than more well-known tourist spots, Champagne Beach also offers great nightlife at Waterfront Melvina's Bar. Order a glass of bubbly or stay for a rum punch and steamed fish as you watch the sunset. Other beaches on the list of seven include, but are not limited to, 
Bathsheba Beach in Barbados, Woodlands Beach in Montserrat, and Paradise Beach in the Bahamas. That's news. Your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. First up in sports, West Indies' hopes of winning the third one-day international against England was shattered when they went down by 187 runs with 10.4 overs remaining on Thursday. England batted first and reached 328 all-out. Alex Hales and Joe Root both got centuries for the winning team with 110 and 101 respectively. Azari Joseph took the most wickets in that match with 4 for 76, while Jason Holder picked up 3 for 41 for West Indies. Set 329 for victory, West Indies was bowled out for 142 in 39.2 overs. Jonathan Carter scored 46 for the West Indies. England won the series 3-0. Moving on to football, where eight clubs have made it to the quarterfinal round of the Dominica Football Association's Division I League following the end of the preliminary stage on Wednesday. In Group 1, we have RC Doctors, East Central, Maosoka Strikers, and MV Maxano Bombers. The clubs in Group 2 are Digicel Newtown Juvenile Academy Harlem United, Ray Charles Point Michelle Police Sports Club, and Gully Dream Team. The quarterfinal round continues into the weekend. On Friday, Rachel Spoit Michelle will come up against Maosuka Strikers, also at the Pori playing field, while at the Newtown playing field, it will be Poli Sports Club versus East Central. These matches begin from 6 p.m. And on Sunday, Digicel Newtown Juvenile Academy Harlem United will battle MV Maxano Bombers at the Newtown playing field at 4 p.m. And in the final match of the preliminary round of the Division I League, we had a Digicel Newtown Juvenile Academy Harlem United defeating Club Lubia six goals to three at Pori playing field on Wednesday. Back with more cricket, where the Dominica Cricket Association has announced an 18-woman squad for continued training ahead of the Windward Islands Cricket Tournament to be held later this month. The Dominica Cricket Association um, has just released a, a list of 18 players. I, I, I think it was... Uh, a shortlisted uh, list of, of, um, of 18 players to continue training. Um, um, they started, or oh, well, they were training prior to yesterday, but yesterday the 18 members basically came together for training um, right there at the Botanical Gardens. There are lots of work to be done still, but they, they're hitting their straps yeah, nicely, I think. Um, they're getting into their own, and by the time the tournament um, we'll be ready to, to take off. I, I, I think they'll be ready. The squad reads Jem Ilwa, Stacey Adrian, Rosalia Regis, Portia Burton, Anika Andrew, Deborah Frederick, Ginny Valmon, Ronette Sanford, Anika Benjamin, Chrisani Irish, Tabitha Green, Aldith and Jennifer Gasper, Pearl Etienne, Amelia Viville, Ernisha Fontaine, Rianne Prevo, and Nicole Eustace. Next up, the 2017 Massey Insurance Under-20 Cricket League organized by the Sports Division continues on Friday with two matches. At Windsor Park, we have Dominica Grammar School and Isaiah Thomas Secondary going head-to-head, -head, while at Botanic Gardens, it will be an encounter of the Goodwill and the Pierre Charles Secondary Schools. Portsmouth Secondary will play host to Dominica State College on Tuesday, and St. John's Academy will travel east to take on Casterbrew Secondary on home turf also on Tuesday. All matches begin at 10 in the morning. Sports continues with this item where plans are in the pipeline to form a table tennis academy here soon to involve people up to the age of 99. This according to Dominica Table Tennis Association President Edgar Berridge. I have looked at table tennis in Dominica and the Caribbean on a whole and I come to realize that what is lacking actually in Dominica is a table tennis academy. So I decided to come about and put forward the table tennis academy and so far I've been getting a very, very, very good response from parents, from schools, from individuals, you know, it's like, wow. He says the training sessions can be challenging and encourages athletes to be serious about the sport. We're going to be doing a full-time coaching session from five days a week, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays from 5.30 to 8 o'clock, and then you're going to have a session on Saturday from 10 to 2. Well, in the academy, what we're expecting the parents and the kids to do that they have to 
sign up for three days. You must do three days. Yeah. It don't make sense. You, you're in the academy and you come today and don't come tomorrow. No. You want to play table tennis, you have to give it hours. You have to give it the time. Yeah. We'll be doing adult group coaching. We'll be doing the junior group coaching. We'll be doing the special needs coaching, which is important. I mean, when you look at our special needs children in Dominica, where are they? They're at home. In England and other development, developed countries, they are involved in sports. So actually, they are the Paralympic. I would want to know, I would want to see that tomorrow in the not too distant future, that we can send a team of table tennis players into the Paralympic. The official opening of the academy is expected to take place March month end. In netball, there were wins for Dominica Grammar School and Northeast Comprehensive in action from the Sports Division Secondary Schools Under-14 Netball Championships on Wednesday. In the DGS versus St. Martin Secondary Encounter, the home team won 27-5. Ellis Hamilton scored 14 from 21 attempts for the home team, while trainees Hamilton assisted with 13 from 17 attempts. In a losing effort, Aliyah Joseph was the lone goal scorer for SMSS with 5. In another match, NECS defeated Goodwill secondary 15-5. For NECS, Leandra Africa netted 9 from 10 and Nadisha Bellot 6 from 15. Cherez George scored 3 from 6 and Halima Augustine 2 from 3 for GSS. The games continue Friday with Convent High School up against St. Martin Secondary followed by Dominica Grammar School versus Pierre Charles Secondary. These matches play at 3 and 4 respectively at Dominica Grammar School. Finally, in sports, we can tell you that Goodwill Primary School dominated play in the opening round of the National Bank of Dominica Primary School Girls Football Competition on Wednesday. GPS topped the performances on the day and finished with nine points. Maho Primary followed with six, then Massac Primary, three. Salisbury Primary finished in the seller position with zero points. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us next time. And the rain keeps coming. We checked in with the Met Office for the latest weather updates. Good evening, Dominica, and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Marshall Alexander. We begin by taking a look at earlier visible satellite imagery and what it showed. This area of cloudiness associated with a frontal boundary affecting weather conditions across the region, and this resulted in mostly cloudy skies across Dominica during today. Now, taking a look at earlier radar imagery and what it indicated, the associated scattered showers mainly across the central portion of the island chain. Now tonight's weather is expected to be mostly cloudy and breezy with some scattered showers and these conditions are expected to continue into tomorrow. As a result, persons in areas prone to flooding, landslides and falling rocks are advised to exercise caution. Sea conditions are expected to be rough in open water with waves peaking near 12 feet. As a result, a small craft warning and a high surf advisory remains in effect until Saturday at 6 p.m. Looking ahead to the next three days, increased cloudiness and scattered showers expected tomorrow. However, as we move into Saturday afternoon and into Sunday, a relative improvement in conditions can be expected. A relative decrease in wind speeds can also be expected as we move into Sunday. For the rest of the Caribbean tomorrow, Partly cloudy to cloudy skies and also breezy conditions with scattered showers can be expected across most of the region during tomorrow. Our international cities forecast. Snow can be expected in New York. Partly cloudy skies expected in Miami and Beijing. Some rain expected in London. And showers and thunderstorm activity can be expected in Caracas. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 6.16 a.m. And sunset will be at 6.15 p.m. For more information, you can call the weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit our website at weather.gov.dm. Thanks for viewing. Have a good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Liat says cutting unprofitable routes not likely to have any major impact on shareholder countries. A Calypso Association executive wants results of this year's Calypso finals investigated and Dominica looking to increase regional appeal of its Jazz and Creole Festival. 
Feel free to contact us at news at marvin2k4.com. You can also access all past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis. And to all our viewers around the world, thank you for watching. Join us next time.